अनुग्रह प्रभात ने पूज्य स्वामी हरिदास Looking back into my own life, before I met my guru from Jinnah I may show the basic inspiration for the writings of Swami Vivekananda. I had an elder uh, member in the family who was a great devotee of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda. And again, in 1960, when I was a student in Delhi University, Swami Ranganatha Nanda was the president of the month that time in Delhi. He asked us, Delhi University students, six of us, to speak on the way down. So the influence has been there, right from those early days. And even today, when I read about him or read what he has spoken, what he has written, it gives me a tremendous source of inspiration. Vivekananda used to say, what we need is nerves of steel and muscles of iron. At the end step, I found this rather unusual, that here is a, a sannyasi who has renounced the world and yet was very much committed to the welfare of the world. So when the organizers of this function, they came to me, that we are coming from Mutishka, we speak. I was only too happy to do that. Swami Vivekananda had visited Kerala. I don't know exactly where and when. And seeing the rampant untouchability here, he called Kerala a madhouse. Not a very good compliment. Anyway, he felt that this has gone to such an extreme in the truth. The very title that you have chosen, I don't know if there's any motto behind it, for this organization, Uttishtha. Uttishtha Jagrada Pratyavaram Nibodha. That is the whole quotation. Say, get up, wake up. Indians have been sleeping for centuries. We have totally confused ourselves between Sattvaguna and Amogu. In the name of Sattvaguna, people have become Tamasya. So they have to be woken up. Please wake up. See the condition of your own country. How degraded we have become. And even in the beginning of the 21st century, no doubt there have been a certain amount of material progress. But along with that, there has been a degradation of man. Human beings have become, not only in India but all over the world, more and more conscious of accumulating wealth and indulging in desires. Artha and Kama have become Paramagrusha. The ultimate goal of human existence even to the modern Indian. We have inherited a wonderful spiritual culture. I would say our national ideal would be of service and renunciation. The readiness to share with the rest of the world. Of course, 
both uh, economically as well as I would say spiritually. We have shared with the rest of the world down the centuries. Everybody has looked up to India as a land of spirituality from the days of Alexander when he was coming to India. He went to his teacher, the great Western philosopher Aristotle, the father of Western logic and philosophy. He asked, what shall I bring for you for India? And Aristotle is supposed to have replied, bring me a philosopher of India. So the mind of India has been the intellect of the Indians has been much appreciated since those days, till today with all your IT movement. There may be more Indians working in this field than any other field. We have always welcomed knowledge. We all live. The truth is one. The sages are called by different names. Then, a great, large-hearted Upanishadic Krishi prayed Ano Vadhyana Kratavo Yantamishwata Let noble thoughts, noble ideas and ideals come to us from all sides. So we have been an open-minded civilization, conscious of our own heritage, conscious of our real source of strength, the spirituality. So from the day it creates till today, if anybody comes to India from other countries, I would say majority of them <coughs> are coming here seeking this spiritual knowledge. And today we find we need it all the more. The more we work, the more we earn, the more we spend. We all become victims of stress and strain. We need all types of stress busters. And I was very happy to notice in today's paper that bhajans and kirtans have become at least for a certain section of youngsters in Tamil Nadu. A stress busters. They are ready to sing they are ready to do Harikatha. Otherwise, they would not have even looked at such music. The impact of the Western civilization has been this that we have been given the knowledge to conquer the world. We, want, we have been encouraged by the great Rishis of Yoga to seek both spiritual as well as scientific knowledge. There is a famous Upanishad, the Mundaka Upanishad. There we find a student going to a master and asking such a fundamental question, which maybe we have started asking only recently. Kasminu Bhagavo Vijnati Sarvamidam Vijnadam Bhavadi. What is that by knowing which all will become known? No other culture I would say I have heard of has allowed this question to come up. It's only the last quarter of a century. We have been developing theories of everything. P O E. In physics, astrophysics, astronomy. The scientists are asking, can we know the mind of God? Then we will have a theory of it. And the Vinishik Vinishi <coughs> replies this to the student that we have to acquire two types of knowledge. Dve Vidhye Vedi Karvye Vidhi Hasmaya Dhramma Vido Madhavadhi Parajaiva Aparajaiva the great Rishi, the Brahmavitsa told us, there are two types of knowledge you must acquire. 
Paravidya and the Aparavidya. The Paravidya dealing with things within the framework of time and space. The Aparavidya are the world of objects. But if you are able to combine and synthesize these two, spirituality and science can be brought together. We need a synthesis of these two for better human existence. And mankind has evolution in the hands of man because we become the dominant species. But now they have reached this point where in what direction should we turn? Where are we going? What will we do with all this knowledge you have accumulated? In the past, <coughs> during the recent history of science, in the 1940s, we discovered the atomic energy, how to burn, to break the atom, a nuclear bomb was tested and made and dropped on human beings. So the pursuit of this technological knowledge without any sort of spiritual guidance system. We need a spiritual guidance system so that we do not convert these knowledges into weapons of destruction. The world is ours. How do we utilize our knowledge of the world, our knowledge about ourselves? That is totally in our hands. So Swami Vivekananda used to say, India has the role of the Guru has to play the role of the Guru to the world. We have to exchange, we have to learn the materialistic knowledge from there. At the same time, give them our spiritual knowledge, in search of which they are coming to India in hundreds and thousands. You go to a Kumbha Mela, you go to any ashram in India, more than 50% of the people are outside. Because this knowledge is not available to them in their culture. Here it seems to have been freely available since times in memory. And this is the precious thing that we have to preserve and propagate. Make use of the modern know-how. Make use of the ancient insights of our visions. And thus combining and synthesizing these two to create a better world, a more peaceful world. Swami Vivekananda and the Resurgence of India. Swami Vivekananda, Parantinja Nagodhano, Enna Vishayate Kurche, Samsari Kinnadana, Ramonapata, Shri Jayananda Gumara, Shri Jayananda. Namasri Dirajaya, वेकानंद सूरे सचित सुखस्वरूपाय स्वामीने आपहारी में पुजनिया स्वामीजी उत्तरस्थाई रहे अध्यक्ष हैं श्री श्री मार्गी युवरा समिति के राइटर रहा धर्माभिमानी लड़ाया, देशभक्त लड़ाया, सपोर्टरी, सपोर्टर मारे, लावर को मिले, बिनी ना माया, नमस्कार। अंगे एकदम पंडित दो जिदों, मनोहरों माया, चेतों हरों माया, पुरु प्रभाषण। Aduh ini mudah dalam kelakaran yang mana agak ramai manusia. Undang undang ini ada yang sami jadi tu nanti yang ni. Parahnya pergi yang kaya itu tu nampak mana? Nampak Bharat itu kurus, Bharat itu ni lebih susah mana ya? Parah ni lebih kurus. Yoga ni boleh mana ya? Nampak tak tu sastra itu ni mahatotte kurus. 
അത് സ്വജീവിതത്തിലൂടെ പകർത്തുകയും ലോകത്തിന് സംഭാവന ചെയ്യുകയും ലോകഗതിയെ തന്നെ മാറ്റി തീർക്കുകയും ചെയ്ത മാനുഷികനായ സംസ്കാരത്തിടമ്പായ ജീവിത നേതാവായ വിവേകാനന്ദ സ്വാമിയെ കുറിച്ചും വളരെയേറെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കുവാൻ സാധിച്ചു സ്വാമിജി തന്നെ വിശ്വപ്രസിദ്ധമായ ചിക്കാഗോയിലെ ആദ്യ പ്രസംഗത്തിൽ വെറും രണ്ടേ മുക്കാൽ മിനിറ്റ് നേരമേ പ്രസംഗത്തെ ആവാഹിച്ചിരിപ്പവനാണ് സ്വാമിജി എന്ന കവി കുഞ്ഞിരാമൻ നായർ പാടിയിട്ടുണ്ട് ആൽവത്തിന്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ ആൽവൃക്ഷം പോൽ താൻ ആയത പ്രവാൻ പ്രപഞ്ചത്തെ ആവാഹിച്ചിരിപ്പവൻ ഉപനിഷത്തിലെ പ്രസിദ്ധമായ ഒരു കഥയാണ് അത് വളരെ മനോഹരമായി വിവേകാനന്ദ സ്വാമിയെ വർണ്ണിക്കുന്ന സന്ദർഭത്തിൽ കുഞ്ഞിരാമൻ നായർ വിവേകാനന്ദ പാറയിൽ എന്ന കവിതയിൽ പറയുന്നു ഏതാണ്ട് അതേപോലെ കുറച്ചു നേരത്തേക്ക് സംസാരിച്ചുകൊണ്ടെങ്കിലും പൂജ്യ സ്വാമി ഹരിദാസ്തി നമ്മുടെ മുമ്പാകെ എല്ലാം പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കെ ശേഷിക്കുന്നത് എന്താണ് എന്ന് അറിയാതെ ഒന്നുകിൽ അതിൻ്റെ കുറച്ചു കൂട്ടി വിശദീകരണങ്ങൾ പറയാം എന്നല്ലാതെ മറ്റൊന്നും പറയാൻ അവശേഷിക്കുന്നില്ല എന്ന ഒരു ആമുഖ വാക്കുകളുടെ വാക്കുകളിലൂടെ ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ സംസാരം ആരംഭിക്കുകയാണ് പൂജ്യ സ്വാമി വിവേകാനന്ദന്റെ സാർത്ഥ ശതി ആഘോഷങ്ങൾ സംസ്കൃത വയ്യാകരൻ 